Again, you're always welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Koch. Uh, Mr. President, the Daily News Crime Fighter program was launched over uh, awards by Alex Michelini is, is almost like fiction of citizens uh, often at great risk to their lives. Many of them face down and distinct honor to introduce to you the President of the United States. The president is now a crime fighter. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mayor Koch, and I thank him. He is the donor of that jacket, which I'm very proud to have. Commissioner McGuire, Senator D'Amato, Congressman Molinari, and James Wehart, together with the residents of this great city, you're reminding all Americans of what is right and good about our people and our country. My hat is off to New York and its police force for their dedicated and often thankless battle against crime. And I congratulate the New York Daily News for caring enough about its community that it sponsors the New York Crime Fighters Award program. I understand that more than $60,000 in those prize monies that Mr. Wehart mentioned had been given out so far, and that's quite an investment in our collective peace of mind. By working together, the city and the daily news are another example of how our public and private institutions can be made even more effective in improving the quality of our lives. But most of all, I want to thank these citizens here for their everyday Americans, thank them for their courage in unexpected circumstances, and for their becoming heroes they were. You know, someone once said that a hero isn't braver than anyone else. He's just brave five minutes longer. <laughs> well, I don't know whether that's the answer or not, but God bless them all. Those who say we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. They certainly haven't been flipping through the pages of the New York Daily News lately. I wish all our people could read, as I have, the accounts of your individual acts of heroism, in each case, you seem to think you acted as anyone else would have uh, in the same situation. And you spoke from your hearts about how we all depend on one another. Alvin Torres said, I just hope people will realize that we must all work together, citizens and police. If somebody needs help, we should try to help out. You've got to try. Well, when you read how the Torres brothers chased down a purse snatcher wielding a knife, how Mrs. Keneally, a grandmother, collared a pickpocket by his neck scarf and gave him the back of her hand until the police arrived. <laughs> I like to picture that one more than anything. <laughs> and how Rabbi Rosenfeld immobilized a mugger armed with a machete. You realize there's nothing very average about the average American. Sometimes I've accused some of our political opponents of referring so much about the common man and I prefer to think that most Americans are pretty uncommon. Here in New York's teeming streets and boroughs, and in towns and cities across America, our people do care about each other, and they're ready to help. From cabbies to construction workers to youths to grandmothers and an airman from Brooklyn, the people of New York are leading the way in what has become a national citizens campaign to restore security to our streets and neighborhoods. Working with their local police, they're getting results. Seeing men and women like yourselves here today in what some say is the busiest precinct in the county, or in the country, I should say, I believe we can and we will rid ourselves of the fear that plagued us. I like to think also that we're not only going to rid ourselves of the, prayer, of the fear, we're gonna transfer that fear to where those skulking people who try to take advantage of their fellow citizens aren't going to just look around for the uniform. They're just going to look around and say, I can't trust these people anymore. <laughs> can't trust them to go their own way and not uh, take us on. 
Together, we're working toward the day when law-abiding men and women can live in confidence, and as I say, only the criminals will be afraid. On behalf of all Americans, I thank the New York crime fighters. I thank the Daily News and New York City. I'll tell your story wherever I go because I know your courage will inspire others. In the meantime, your fellow citizens are grateful that you've made the world a little safer, a little more free, and filled with a great deal more hope. I want to congratulate you on your awards, and again, thank you for your courage. God bless all of you, and thank all of you.
I'm sure some of its dimensions may not be fully appreciated. Take some of the key economic indicators, for example. Auto production is up 40% in the last quarter of the same quarter a year ago. New home sales were up in February by 49% per year. I was just hoping that the raising taxes and increasing domestic spending might be a little bit of prosperity. We're all glad that the recovery is seen. In 1982, we had the largest level of giving to charitable organizations in our nation's history. 46% of handicapped people who are confined to their homes have been still operating computer keyboards. There are public private people in the hemisphere, this hemisphere of all Americans, and all of us share a vital stake in the future of democracy and freedom. We have it within our power to act now to keep the situation management. And it's in this city that I shall speak to the Congress and to the nation. If you are not renominating, would you explain why? Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the question is that uh, there are reports that the President does not, there's a question whether or not he would uh, not. For administrative or political convenience, rather than because of national security, did your administration impose a lie detector test in jail terms and punish leaders? Isn't the real problem? For those of you in the back of the room, I had Henninger from Pitney, Ohio, asked Secretary Watt seems to create a lot of problems for himself and your administration on environmental issues. If you could do just one thing for us when you get back to the White House. Please give our best to a, best wishes to a man whose professionalism and courage we so much admire, Jim Brady.